Oh, this, this is good stuff here. We might be able to get two into green and two into blue. To even think that that color change could get any prettier, it did. It was absolutely gorgeous. Show them. All right, Scotty, change of plans. We're going to go catch them the easy way now, buddy. When I get to see them flyers getting up and them tunas elevated launching, you know, six feet in the air, just, pew, you know, it's just, it don't get no cooler than that. Simrads Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. What are we going to do today, boss? Well, the fact that it's blowing 20 out of the east, I think we should just go put up the sailfish uh, kites and just drift. And go with the current and the wind, Scott. It's so windy that there's no need to try to anchor or battle the seas. I saw a bunch of uh, flags on the rigger, so I rode into town. I've yeah. got the kites on here, got the kite rods. It's a little bit what early. about the bait? But this is the touch, the beginning of spring, yeah. so there should be a few fish around. See that moon? It is full. That's got to be that current. It's got to be running. Let's find a current. Give me some thread fins. Let's do it. Yeah, I think with that full moon, you're going to have a lot of uh, incoming and outgoing tides, so there should be some edges out there. All right, I'm going to get some sabikis rigged up while you're uh, getting us out of here. All right, I'm going to use the old Joy Stickerooski. You know, see, nothing gets me more jacked up than getting a chance to go sail fishing. And word on the uh, docks last couple of days was there's a beautiful powder edge off of Big Pine, and I was hoping that maybe down here there'd be one, too. You know, the, the talk on the dock is definitely that the conditions are there. Not necessarily the sailfish are there, but the conditions. So um, I know how much you love sailfish, and we're going to go out and give it a shot. The, the number one thing, obviously, you, you know, you've taught me this, is the bait has to be perfect. You know, down here, uh, in my career of fishing down here, we caught it every day and never really pinned it up or what have you. So we're, you know, but you guys who actually pin bait up and, and spend a lot more time tournament sail fishing, you understand how important it is. The bait has to be perfect. That's what we like to see. You got them all? Maybe got them. We were covered in case the wind got too much that the water moved them to another spot and we don't have time to be chasing bait all day long trying to, you know, put a day together. So it was pretty darn good uh, heron fishing, which is all we needed to uh, put in the kites and go give her a, a good try. Oh, this, this is good stuff here. We might be able to get two in the green and two in the blue. Need a couple cooperators. Pretty excited. A couple cooperators. I'm going to get you a kite there, Captain. Please do. I'm going to start the black ones, I guess. I mean, it's not as windy as it was on land. Yeah. At least it doesn't seem that way. You want to try a red one? Try red. Old white birds are like, all right, go ahead and put your herring out so I can eat them. Well, I got that new uh, sea anchor. We've borrowed them before, but that was ours. So I had to set it up. And it was just moving us right up the edge, keeping us right between the purple and the green. And ultimately, the wind took over the tide, and we had to bring in the parachute completely. And then you use your uh, your go-to, which is the helm master and the autopilot, where you just uh, one engine in gear, pointer in the direction, and it kept us kept us from drifting in inshore. You had a chance to get up in the tower and look from swimming while I, you know, took care of the kites. What you got there? Keep an eye on that one. Got you a little wire? Got me a lot of wire. We done bit, been bit off about six times. Six! <laughs> maybe 10. Maybe, maybe a dozen. Hey. Be 
fish on. What I got, Stevie boy? Deep water, shallow water, kingfish everywhere. Wire's coming down the edge. Got that number five wire like you like. Woo! Come on, Mr. Wahoo. Just an angry king. It's all right. Put him in your smoker, buddy. Perfect release, Bubba. He went through the wire. Went right through it. Did he? That showed you how sharp them teeth are, man. Oh, yeah. You know, went from kind of slow fishing to kind of crazy with the kings. You know, I never had a full spread out for an hour at one time. But man, when there's that kind of activity, you just know the next bite's gonna be a sale. So I cannot tell you what it was. Hopefully it's a tuna fish and not another bonita. Head shaking. King Mackin. Oh, King Mackerel in the lip. The water's worth full of mackerel today. Let this guy go. Come, come on. Sweet. Oh, where'd he come from? <laughs> Now the big one's mad. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad, go with confidence. Bubba, the ultimate lifestyle. Sea Deck, your boat deserves Sea Deck. Waypoint TV, streaming the best hunting and fishing series. Download the app today. By Yamaha, reliability starts here. And by Ameritrail Trailers, Hawks K Resort, and Power Pro. I really appreciate how hard you do work out there on those kites because man, there was never a moment where you did not have to get Reel this one in, let this one out, tie a new hook on. You turn around to go to the second kite, and both of those would be cut off. I, I can feel you not even wanting to tell me. No, I wouldn't tell you nothing. You, <laughs> I, I I'd be like, man, he just put that I'm one not, out. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to let him I'm not even going to tell you, because it, it, <laughs> I've been in your spot, and it gets really <laughs> annoying. You know what I mean? That's and, all right. It's artwork, and it's fun, and uh, just as easy could have been. A selfish. 20 selfish that day. Right. And yeah. you know what? The We were going to be ready. Yeah. We're looking at the chart plotter, and we're really not moving, so we're just stuck in this body of water with these kings. I think if I can drive, we can actually move and get out of them. Hopefully bump into a sailfish, and I'll come down there and help you out. While we're running from here to there, we have sharks attacking, we've got kingfish attacking, we're fighting bonitas because they don't break off. I mean, everything was there, but the star of the show. Oh, hammerhead coming in, Scotty, now. <laughs> That hit, you chummed him up with that bonita right there. The last one was a uh, sandbar chasing him. Uh-huh. All right, hammer on, baby. Hammer on. <laughs> oh, it's a big one. <laughs> what happened to that little four-footer went by the first time? You're going to be able to turn him. Coming back this way for more. Keep that fish in the water. He's not done yet. Oh, look at him. He don't want to, is he going to go into the blue water? Is he going to stay in the powder? Oh, he got me. When you caught that bonita, we saw the hammerhead. I went ahead and made him bleed and see what we can get up to the boat. And it's really cool. A lot of people don't get to see sharks like that. So it was neat to tease him and play with him a little bit. Bump him in the nose with it. That's a wide body right there. <laughs> There's a little, little guy right behind him. <laughs> He's got some mouthful. That is crazy. Shark wrangler. Amber might be scared of mama. She's right there. She's going to come get a bite. You'd think we have just as many sailfish as sharks. <laughs> you would think. You got a bite that time, Scott. Getting faster. 
Just like shellfish and only it's different. Shark wrangling. Here comes the hammer coming in hot. I'm not quite sure that's how most people go shark fishing, but I liked your technique. With, yeah, no hooks. I didn't, want to, I, I didn't want to fight him. I just wanted to see him up mm -hmm. close, you know? Oh, boy, he's angry. <laughs> Get ready for shark week. If I can't find you a sailfish, I figure I'll find you a shark. Thanks, buddy. Want to see more Into the Blue? Well, head on over to Waypoint TV. You can watch the last 12 seasons, get exclusive content, educational videos to make you a better fisherman. You can either download the app or go to waypointtv.com. After the sharks were all up in our stuff, you had the kings cutting us off. I made the decision of, you know what, let's, we're not hearing about anybody catching or hooking any sailfish. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and, and, and run inshore and get a hold of some little baits because you got to have the little bait in order to get the tuna fish going. And there had been a good tuna bite. So we made that decision, even as rough as it is. We knew where the bait was from the day before. We shot inshore, uh, made a couple throws, and we were locked and loaded to change the whole day around. From, from, you know, which but there was nothing wrong with it. Nobody was unhappy. But the fact is we weren't getting the sailfish. They weren't there. And let's change it up and do something different. Catch something. All right, Scotty, change your plan. We're going to go catch him the easy way now, buddy. All right, let's go. Let's go. Scotty, make it easy. Let's go, let's go force feed him. <laughs> force feed him. So when we got back out, it was amazing because to even think that that color change could get any prettier, it did. It was absolutely gorgeous. Um, once we got on the outside of the color change in the, into the purple water where the tunas like to live, there was sheets and sheets of flying fish. There was frigate birds everywhere. I had a really good feeling that we didn't need to anchor down. We didn't need to go to the wreck. We're just gonna sit on that edge, just outside of the reef, and get out there in 160, and we started unloading bait. And boy, did it get going. Ben Jones got it. Ooh, that was close. I saw him eat that one. <laughs> Only bait there. The rest of them are under the motors. <laughs> when life gives you lemons, make sashimi. <laughs> At least he got that option. Little bit easier than kite fishing. I love <laughs> kite fishing. Spray it, baby, spray it. This time we got fish on. <laughs> Last time we didn't come back with anything. <laughs> we haven't got anything yet. I know. I mean, once you tie 50 hook sets, it's nice to be able to bet pole something. You're after. Tell you what, you guys. Don't know how lucky you are to have this option. They're still off the bow, banging. All right, Scotty. Almost to the boat. He's a round one. <laughs> one last little move. Got him. Nice work. Cool fish. I saw a shark, but he was down deep. Really? Yeah. Well, there's a scoop of them right here, bud. I want to sprinkle a few out before we take off. All right, could do that. Shark got me. You ever woke up in the morning and just wondered where you're going to go fishing? Well, coming very soon, Simrad's new XM4 fish mapping antenna is going to help you do that from the cockpit of your boat before you ever leave the dock. But what's really exciting now is just a touch of your finger on the screen. Choose the fish you want and the highest probability area will pop up right on the screen for you to make a decision where you're gonna fish that day. I'm gonna pick three, because it's uh, winter time. I wanna know about kingfish, sailfish, and wahoo. Got a full moon coming, and that's what I'm thinking about. So now it's gonna give me a bar over here, and it's gonna start hunting for those three recommendations and they're gonna overlay them on a the screen in, in round circles or ovals with the color you see here. The brownish color for kings, a little green for sale, and a blue for me wild. And now they're starting to download right here. I spent a career building a network to help me find all this information out. 
Maybe you don't. You're down for a quick weekend or you just have one day on the water. From now on, you'll be able to take your Simrad and just touch a button. And all this information I spent a lifetime gathering, you can have at your fingertips in a few minutes of downloading from the satellite. Got the temperature, grades, one day, two day, three day. And that's your high, the three days, your highest probability. And then if you can find where the plankton front uh, coexists with that, that's where all, everything's gonna start happening. Imagine making better decisions as the day goes on rather than relying on 24 or 48 old information. You're gonna be getting constant updates every 15 to 30 minutes that's gonna change your catch rate and your fun on the water. And now, here comes my weed lines. It's, it's actually a weed line, it's not a guess. It's see, the new technology from space can see a weed line. So if it says go there, there's gonna be a weed line there, especially if you're into dolphin fishing in the spring and summer. But now I've got sea surface temperature front, I've got a plankton front, and they're all coming together. And if you just touch that spot, it's gonna tell you what they think about it. So the plankton front's too moderate. The sea surface temperature too is moderate for kings. And then down here, just a little ways, I've got a kingfish inside of a wahoo. So I'm gonna get on that. And what do we got here? We got plankton front, three strongest. Uh, sea surface temperature front, three strongest. So that one spot, which we can go to measure, and we are right off of St. Augustine, and if we wanted to go catch those things, and if, by the day's end, we'd have a box full of wahoo and kingfish. We wouldn't have wasted any fuel, and we're gonna have a great day. Be sure to head to your local West Marine and let have a specialist go through these fish mapping features with you and get your WXM4 antenna ordered today. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Scales, every degree of water. Yeti, built for the wild. West Marine, for your life on the water. And by Shimano. Costa Pro Series. Nikon. Golden Boat Lifts and by SpearOneKeyWest.com. Into the Blue is on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Give us a follow or subscribe and check out behind the scenes footage and wonderful photography posted daily. So, you know, blackfin tunas are the predominant tuna down here in the Keys. Obviously, people are familiar with eating canned tuna fish. A lot of people, when I first take them out, they see it's red, they don't even, what do you mean? It's white, isn't it? I'm like, no. Fish on. But it's what we catch, and if you're offshore, they're hard pullers, they're uh, acrobatic when it comes to crashing the bait. You know, they like to sky out. So you, that, the telltale sign of knowing it's a tuna versus a bonita is he's gonna come out of the water and you're gonna see him. Yep. Off the bow, baby. Oh yeah. As much as I'd like a 25 pounder, 15s would be fine. Uh. No, 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 no. Head collar. God, I see him. You got him, baby. No, the sharks are there. You got him. Sharks Take are there. Take your time. Fishing was fun until sharks show up. Disrespecting this little 15 pounder. So disrespectful. Uh. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Any bigger than that, we can't That's catch it. it. Take it. Oh, there's a nice one there. Oh, did you see that? <laughs> you can air it out. It's always an amazing, you'll hear me scream, you know, like that's straight up Nat, Nat Geo stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's what I, I like to see, and that's what gets me pumped up. And it's just like with feeding the sharks and, and teasing them up. I want to see the action. I want to see the feeding. I don't want to. I don't really necessarily need to catch them. I don't necessarily need to fight them. Half the time, I don't want to fight them. Um, but when I get to see those fish doing what they do with that natural, not me bringing the bait out there and throwing it. When I get to see them flyers getting up and them tunas elevated launching, you know, six feet in the air, just you know, it's just it don't get no cooler than that, man. And, and that twilight, that late in the afternoon. Um, it's just, it's really cool, and uh, it's a magical time to be 
out down here in Key West. It's not a magical time to be a flying fish, that's for sure. Oh, no, Woo. no doubt. <laughs> Shark run, if you ask me. A run from a shark. Don't be a shark. Don't do it. That's a black, That's a black one. You know, the beauty of these black fin tuna is their eyeballs. I mean, they're compact little uh, energy machines. They gotta eat, eat, eat. And when they get hooked up, they are gonna take drag. That's a lot of drag, boss. Ugh. You're not gonna stop them from their first run. So don't even try. Light leaders, they're a long way to trick these beautiful eyeballs. They can, they, they're on to it. They know uh, what's up. So we gotta use light leaders. So our fights are generally uh, knock down, drag out. And then we have to deal with the sharks. So, I mean, they're a perfect machine because we can find them anywhere near shore, anywhere over 100 feet, wrecks, shrimp boats in the Gulf. They're the perfect tuna because they're great to eat. We're gonna can these and grill these. Uh, but tr tricking them to eat is one thing, and then trying to catch them without the sharks getting eaten is uh, is our biggest challenge always. Bring them around, good. All right. Eyeballs. Hold on, hold him there, hold him there. Okay, I got him. Good job, buddy. Thank you. That's full grown. They don't get bigger than that. That's right. That's what they look like there, buddy. <laughs> you know, at the end of the day, we, we did not catch the sailfish we were after but we had kingfish, we had bonitas, we wrangled sharks, and then we finished up with these beautiful black fin tunas. But now I need to get these things on ice and put a little splash of fuel on the boat, take it back to the dock, and put it on the golden lift. The real deal. Ha <laughs> ha!